How's it going guys? It is 3.35 a.m. 23rd of December here in Japan and I'm just feeling some questions for you as similarly students from within our telegram group asking about how to prepare for step one fairly standard. Okay, I've made innumerable clips here on the YouTube talking about this um, but I get asked the same dumb questions. Okay, so as far as how to prep for step one, can I be concise and consolidated in terms of uh, how to get you through this thing with some broad umbrella statements. Uh, I can tell you there's four things you need to do to ace step one. Okay, obviously pass fail exam, but get you the biggest score augmentation that you need to uh, clear the pass mark as much as possible, right? Get your scores up. That's the point. So four things uh, you need to do. Uh, keep this real clean and simple. Not going to be a lengthy clip. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So how to prepare for step one, okay? And as I just fucking said, four things that you need to do. Number one, you're going to go through all your world. Not dramatic, not creative, not novel information in any regard, okay? Got to go through the whole cue bank. Obviously, pass-fail step one. So some students will ask whether it's necessary to go through all of UWorld. My response is yes, I want you doing the whole thing because recognize that ultimately the best prep for 2CK is going to be solid step one prep slash foundation. So I don't want you shortchanging your step one prep. Okay, students I have who score poorly on 2CK material, it's often because their step one foundation is weak. So obviously there's going to be molecular, embryologic nonsense, pharmacokinetics nonsense that might surface while you're prepping for step one that won't necessarily carry over to 2CK. But the majority of the material, it's just simultaneous prep for 2CK. So don't think of it as wasting your time going through all of you world for step one, okay? So I want you to go through the entire QBank for step one. Now, I've made tons of clips here on the YouTube talking about how to go through UWorld, tutor versus timed, how many questions, okay? Just the whole uh, detailed process. You can just literally search Melman UWorld, okay? Innumerable videos on that. But the first point, you're gonna go through all of UWorld. After you finish UWorld, you're gonna do NBMEs 20 through 30 for step one, okay? So obviously 25 through 30 are online, but I want you doing 20 through 24 offline. Now, after you finish UWorld, you're going to do 20, 21 first. And if your scores are under 60-ish percent correct, okay, I can give broad umbrella statements. Obviously, for every student, it's going to be a unique process. There's calibrations that uh, would necessarily be implemented. But in general, if you're scoring under 60% on NBME's 20, 21 offline, I will oftentimes have the student go back through UWorld incorrects, not a second pass of UWorld, UWorld incorrects, okay? Build up the foundation a bit more. If you're clearing around 60% on NBMEs 2021 20, offline, I'll have you proceed with NBMEs 22 to 24, then I'll have you do free 120, then I'll have you do the online NBMEs 25 through 30. It's a long fucking discussion. Some students get very emotional about when they do free 120, they want to do it late, okay? I think you should do it prior to the online NBMEs. That's in my view. I've made many clips talking about this as well. If you search Melman free 120, okay? Talk lots of uh, lots of discussion, okay, regarding free 120 uh, I've already done here. So that's the second thing. So number one was UWorld, all of it. Number two, NBMEs 20 through 30, including free 120 in there. So all that NBME content. Uh, you're going to make Anki cards of your incorrects from the NBME exams, okay? Also made tons of clips on this, okay? It's a very repetitive. Say the same fucking shit, okay? But I've made lots of fucking clips talking about this stuff in detail. But you're going to make Anki cards from your incorrects from each NBME exam, and you're ultimately going to study those incorrects as you move through 20 through 30, so you're building the reinforcement, okay? So that's the second thing, all the NBME material, including free 120. The third, my PDFs. Now, they're for free on my website. I'll uh, put them in a pinned comment below. And some students will say, well, which PDFs in particular? Or when should I do the PDFs in relation to UWorld NBME exams? High yield arrows, I'd say, is most specific for ruling you in for passing the step one exam. If you know high yield arrows, you're going to pass the step one, okay? So I'd say that's a foundational PDF. 
Uh, many students tend to discuss, you know, my, my neuroanatomy, biochemistry, immunology, etc. As far as like favorite PDFs, these things get perpetuated. So yes, those are excellent PDFs, but I really want you knowing high yield arrows, okay? Because that's gonna absolutely ensure you can get through your step one exam. A lot of students lose steam going through that PDF as per my observation. As far as when you should do the uh, PDFs, you should do them while you're doing UWorld, while you're doing the NVMe exams. A lot of students like to, not a lot, but some students like to float the notion that doing my PDFs, which I've written based on the NVMe material, will somehow artificially inflate your scores on the NVMe's. It's a bunch of nonsense. Okay, I mean, if you're studying the right material, yes, your scores are gonna go up. So no, you shouldn't be studying some obscure resource that has no fucking relation to USMLE. Your scores don't go up on the NVMe exams and then somehow you're more content with that. It's not a good idea. You should study the right things. So you're gonna go through my PDFs, okay? Cardio, renal, palm, et cetera. I want you to go into the PS. That's the third component. The fourth component is you're gonna do my MCQs here on the YouTube, okay? Call it audio QBank colloquially. Used to be literally just audio, the first 260 questions or so just on my website. Okay, if you go actually into the audio cubing tab on my website, but then about from 260-ish onward, I started making YouTube clips. So if you go into my playlist here, you'll see by playlist, you say, well, I suck jack fucking shit at cardio, for instance. Okay, well, do my cardio playlist of all the MCQs. Okay, and even for 2CK, you'll see those playlists, PED, surgery, etc. So I want you knocking out those uh, MCQs here on the YouTube in your downtime. Okay, so... Cooking, cleaning, while you're at the gym, while you're brushing your teeth, flossing, you can have the phone right there on the countertop, knock out a clip passively, okay? So very fucking ace in terms of a resource. So you're studying, but if you're ADHDing out and you're not able to do textual stuff slash questions, like actual written questions where you have to sit and read, okay? So if you're ADHDing out in that regard, you can study by doing my videos, okay? So a very effective resource. So those are the four things. Number one, you're going to go through all of UWorld. Number two, you're going to do all the NVMe content, 20 through 30. Okay, so 20 through 24 offline, 3 20, 25 through 30. You're going to make Anki from your incorrect. And number three is going to be my PDFs, especially high arrows. Number four, you're going to be doing my MCQs here on the YouTube, colloquially my audio cue bank. And in, then in turn, if you have more specific questions as far as like how to go through all of those prep processes regarding each of my components, etc. then just search on the YouTube. Literally fucking thousand videos here on my YouTube uh, as far as how to go through your prep, okay? So I'm going to end the clip here. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.